everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation. It's very good to be here in Mexico in less than one year. In November of last year, I was here at Startup Nations. So we went ju not just to see Mexico City, but also to Monterrey. And I'm here also with, like, now I'm a, I have a personal attachment to Mexico. I have a brother that's living and working here in Mexico. So I hope to, to be back again and again in next, the next few years. I'm here to talk about Startup Brazil. I'm Vitor Andrade. I'm now an advisor for Startup Brazil. I was the COO for one hour, one, one year and a half since until September. So I'm just recently stepped down as the COO, but I'm now an advisor here at Startup Brazil. And to share some of our experiences and what's been happening in the Brazilian startup ecosystem. Very good to talk about Marcos Dantas. Because in Brazil, we, we think that we had a, a, the very, the, the ecosystem is accelerating in a very fast way, such as Mexico. I think the, the slides show that in Brazil, we are having the same thing. I've been, been working with startups for almost 10 years, when nobody knows what is a startup, what was a startup. The term startup was not so common. When you talk about startup, you just think about the American startups, but not in Latin America. It's in 2007, so it's been very different from now. I think now we have been talking about, we have so popular in Brazil that with startup, with entrepreneurs in leading roles, three, three, four, five years ago, it was impossible to think of so popular and magazines approaching to entrepreneurship. In every, I think, every month, we have at least one magazine that are approaching entrepreneurship, and especially the digital startups that are happening in Brazil. I've been in Startup Brazil since 2013. I was the second hire back then. And from 2015 to now, I was after replacing Felipe Matos, that probably once uh, some of you know him because of the other conferences. I'm replacing him, I was replacing him in 2015 and I stayed to, to, until 2016. Very good to explain here the startup ecosystem in Brazil. I started to work with them in 2007 in an innovation institute in Recife, that's a city in the northeast of Brazil. So there's not only Sao Paulo, Rio, Minas, there's a lot of great cities in Brazil, great states, and there's a lot of happening things happening not only in Sao Paulo, but in all of those cities. In 2007, we have just a few large companies. Buscapé is still the biggest success case in Brazil when they were acquired by, uh, by a South, South African fund in 2003-04. So there's a lot of, just a few players working with that. Endeavor started work at that time. Some, some universities work with entrepreneurship, but just the unmarried emerging ecosystem. In 2010 or around 2010, things started to change. A lot of community events started to happen. Campus Party had like 10 editions in Brazil. It's a very big event, like 8,000 people working and talking about technology, but in the last two years, talking a lot about entrepreneurship. As the main theme in the Campus Party in Brazil is entrepreneurship right now. The accelerators was, were founded at, at the time. The first accelerators in Brazil started in 2011, 2012. So we just had just a few accelerators at that time. The mentoring programs, Star Brazil, we consider an, an acceleration program, but the most important part is to accelerate their entrepreneurs through their, their companies. So our job is to make entrepreneurs better, connecting them with investors, mentors, and a lot of different players to help them to accelerate their businesses and their skills. So Startup Brazil started in 2012, so around that. Corporations started to, to know and to work with startups, but just a few of them, like say Totus, Telefonica, Local Web. The investors tried to increase, not only Brazilian investors, but foreigners started to invest in Brazil around that time. And large companies have more success cases being built in Brazil at that time. And now I come to 2015, 2016. The main 
difference here, I can say that the accelerators are getting more mature. We have accelerators that accelerated more than 100 startups. At least two of them accelerated more than 100. Several more than 50. I can say that accelerators as startups, they need to accelerate more to learn and to be better on that. Now we have more accelerators that are not accelerating. They are focusing their, their, their endeavors not only in general entrepreneurship, but also in fintech companies, agri-tech companies. So we are, we are seeing accelerators that are building, uh, like you can say, vertical accelerators now in Brazil that in two years, two years ago we didn't have. The corporation, I think, is the main difference from 2010 to now. Many, many Brazilian and international corporations are doing programs in Brazil. Not startup competitions, but they are founding accelerators, funds to invest in those startups. And as Danto said, one important part in the ecosystem is the exit. It's when a startup that was invested can be sold to a big company. And we didn't have that three years ago. Now we have more and more Brazilian and international companies being approached or approaching startups in different ways. I will talk about a little about that. And we have more large companies and investors. Sequoia, that's one of the most famous investors in the world, did their first investment three years ago in New Bank. That's a fintech company that's been very huge in Brazil. I'd like to clarify two, two points here two, that are very important for the ecosystem to accelerate. We are, we've been working at Star Brazil in the early stage phase of the companies, but for them to grow, we need to connect them with investors and corporations. The investors, I think you saw this, it's a, a recent article from TechCrunch. They're using data from LAFCA, from Latin America Venture Capital Association, that they're saying that the big, the top tier investors in the US are coming to Latin America to invest in Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, Chile. So there's a lot of great companies in Brazil and the Americans and the big funds are seeing that. So some of the investments that I can like can highlight here. New Bank was invested by Founders Fund. There's a Peter Thiel Fund, the guy that invested in Facebook and now invested in a New Bank. Sequoia did their first investment in Brazil through New Bank. Kazak Ventures, an Argentinian fund, did several, several investments in Brazil. Just Brazil, I'd like to, to highlight this case. Just Brazil, these guys, they are from Salvador, in, in Bahia, it's, a, it's a, a, another state in Brazil. They are not in Sao Paulo, and they were invested by the Founders Fund as well. Cargo X was invested by Goldman Sachs, Lumia Capital, and Valor Capital, Via Bolso for IFC, Kazakh. So we are having a lot of investment from uh, in, uh, foreign investors in Brazil, in fintech, in logistics, in education. So there's a lot of different sectors that were invested by great investors in Brazil. Right now we have, I think, two hot sectors. The fintech sector is very hot in Brazil right now. Not only with startups, but the big Brazilian banks are trying to worry, are very worried about what startups can do with their businesses. They are coming together to do initiatives. They are doing startup competitions. They are, doing, they are building funds to invest in startups. So if you have a fintech startup, if you have a very good team with a great solution for a big market, the fintech sector is very interesting to go to Brazil right now. In another sector that's very important for the Brazilian economy, but three years ago was not very focused by the startups, was the agri-tech sector. The most important sector in the Brazilian economy, but the startups weren't there, weren't there. Now they're getting there. We have several startups in agri-tech being founded. We have accelerators that are now looking for agri-tech as an investment uh, sector that we, don't have, we didn't have a few years ago. So an agri-tech I think still not so hot as fintech. Everybody's looking for fintech startups, but the agri-tech will be hot in one year because we are seeing 
some investment happening in Brazil, and Brazil is a very big market for for this kind of uh, of businesses, and they can be after they can spend for Latin America for a lot of good reasons. And I talk about corporations. This article was written by Anderson Tez. He's a very seasoned investor in Brazil. Now it's now in TechCrunch, the article. I suggest you to read. And he's talking about the corporate, like corporations getting contact with the Brazilian startup ecosystem. 500 startups did an, an study with inside, if I'm not wrong. They, they are trying to clarify that uh, there are different stages in the connection between corporations and startups. And we have a lot of good examples in each of these stages. As support, support services, when corporations offer support services for startups. Programs of Amazon, IBM, and Facebook in Brazil. Events, there's a lot of them happening. Mastercard, Coca-Cola, Natura. Co-working spaces. Uh, Itaú, it's a Brazilian bank, partnered with Redpoint Ventures. There's a, uh, it's a very big investor in Brazil. And they decided to build their co-working space in Sao Paulo. That's, the name is Kubo. And they are receiving a lot of great events. And they, they work as a hub to connect big companies, not only banks, but big companies with startups. They have, I think, 50 startups there that are working in the Kubo space, but they're very connected with other startups, not only with those that are working there. In Google, uh, founded his, I think, the sixth uh, campus, the first in Latin America, in Sao Paulo, in less than, I think, six months ago. So now we have two Great, two big corporations, Google and Itaú, building co-working spaces for entrepreneurs in Brazil. This is happening in São Paulo. Those and they work very, very close with Kubo working with more mature startups and Google Campus with entrepreneurs that are more early stage. There's a lot of accelerators with partnered with corporations. Telefonica was one of the first accelerators in Brazil. Was Huayra. That's, that you probably you know here in Mexico. Telefonica started with WIDA, and now they have the funds and the crowd working spaces. That's like a co-working space in partnership with different par partners. As are happening in Brazil, so the Telefonica presence is increasing in Brazil. Porto Seguro, that's an insurance company. They started with an accelerator, and now they have a fund to invest in startups. And BAF, Recently, partnered with Acelerotech Ace, that's an accelerator in Brazil, to invest in agri-tech startups. And we have some corporations that are also making funds to invest. Embraer has a fund to invest in companies in Brazil. Microsoft, they have a, a, one fund there that they are partnered with Monsanto. And, and now I, think, I don't remember if a bank to invest in those, those startups. And Algar is a very big company in Brazil, is also investing in startups, in, in startups right now. And the M&A part, that's still an issue, still a, a challenge in Brazil. But Movili, Tivit, B2W, they bought companies in Brazil. Tivit bought a startup that went through Strata Brazil, that was just two years old, was bought by Tivit as a very big service, IT service company in the country. Movili, it's almost an international company right now. They have a business that, that's Play Kids. They are based in the US, but it's very huge in China and other parts of the, of the world. B2W, they bought two companies in uh, of Sarah Brazil in 2015. So the MA activity is still uh, a challenge, but it's happening. I know that first they have to, to hap happen, then they will increase. We have also a lot of events that are talking about the corporations and startups. Corporate Venture in Brazil was an event held by Apex Brazil. That's an agency for the government to promote export, exports and invest, attract investment to Brazil. They, they will have their second edition this year in October, I think, the 2000, uh, October 24th to 20th. So they are tr trying to have 
not only Brazilian corporations, but international corporations that they have the own units of corporate venture. They, they are coming together to discuss this, this topic in October. And they have like a Brazil Ventures, a group, a network of Brazilian companies that are discussing this relationship with startups. So there is not only the corporations, they have like a support group to talk and to share knowledge, to, to be how, how they can be, how they can approach better to the startups. Because we know that some of them are already doing that for years, but some are starting to do right now, so they need to learn with each other to be better on doing that. And after all of this, of this involvement, Sao Paulo was selected in 2015, the best startup ecosystem in Latin America. Among 20, the 20, top 20, Sao Paulo was the 12th best ecosystem in Latin America. But the good news, that's the bad news is Brazil is very big, very big country. There's a lot of different realities. I'm from the Northeast, so I know that there's not only Sao Paulo in Brazil. So our challenge at Star Brazil is how can we do a really national program in a very big country with a lot of different realities in the same country. But the good news is that we have great ecosystems in Brazil, nor only in Sao Paulo. I'd like to highlight just three. Manguezal is a startup community that happens in Recife, the city that I came from. They are based, they came from a very strong computer science university, a very good science park in Brazil, Porto Digital, one of the most famous science parks in Brazil and some one case in the world. So it started a community right, that, right there in 2000, and now they are having more and more startups growing there. We have São Pedro Valley. You can say that a lot of Brazilian startup consumers decided to use the valley, like Silicon Valley, but there are São Pedro Valley. São Pedro is a neighborhood in, in Belo Horizonte. They decided, no, now we are São Pedro Valley. They have a very big companies right now. We have Samba Tech. There's a very interesting company, like a YouTube for companies. Simpla, a, a very big event ticketing company. So, so just su such a, uh, a great ecosystem right there. They are very supportive with each other. It's very interesting. With when one startup that decides, no, oh, I need to build like a sales team, but I've never had a sales team. I can reach to a, a big startup there. They decide, no, you can train my team to be a better sales team. So I, I can do that. Very interesting, this ecosystem. And in the South, Startup SC, it's in Florianópolis, in the south. It's a very huge uh, startup ecosystem back then with the support of government, but also with investors, private investors doing investment there. But that's not only here. There's a lot of different places with their own valleys or their own startup communities. In the south, north, northeast, center east. So every, every part of Brazil we have at least a startup community. Some of them are very involved, and some of them are just founded. Because of that, we decided to do Startup Brazil as a public and private partnership. It's an initiative from the Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation, and Communication from Brazil, from the Brazil federal government. And we decided to partner with accelerators to invest and to accelerate X startups offering them not only grants, but also connecting them with the market. That we think that for startups is the most important part. It's not only giving them grants or money, but also to connect them with the market. We received so far in four classes, almost 3,000 applications from Brazil and abroad. We have invested uh, one in 183 startups from 17 Brazilian states. That's very important to us to have startups not only in one or two states, but in 17 out of 27 in Brazil. So we have startups in 12, 17 out of 27. But also in 13 countries. I think there has some problem here. In 13 countries, we have just one Mexican company 
you need more. In a lot of different sectors, they are all software, hardware, or IT services solutions to problems that are in education, health, retail, logistics, fintech. So there are solutions for problems in more than 15 different sectors in Brazil. We offer them grants up to 200,000 uh, reais. Now it's 60, 60k dollars. We connect them with the best accelerators in Brazil that also invest in the company. So accelerators must invest in the company, become partner, and work with them in the mentor sessions to help them to grow faster. We have visa for foreigners, international hubs and missions to make companies, Brazilian companies go abroad. That's still a, a, a challenge in Brazil because Brazil is a very big country. A lot of our startups still are working only in Brazil, but some of them are trying to reach other countries. I think Mexico and Latin America are a very clear destination for that. We offer opportunities to connect them with big companies and with each other and to present them to investors. We held eight demo days so far, four in Brazil and four abroad. One of them we did in 2013 with Chile, with Startup Chile. We took 10 companies of Brazil, they took 10 companies, and we presented that in 2013. But we had three in US, one in Chile, and four in Brazil. More than 40 startups presented their businesses for investors in Brazil and abroad. Some of our results, our startups, we invested as government 34 million reais, and they also were invested by external investors and accelerators by more than 100 million reais. So at every one dollar, one real of the government, three were invested by the external investors. So there's not a public program, it's a public and private really happening in Brazil. Just to share out some of our results that are not in the numbers of the startups. They did these numbers, not us. We helped them. Now we have a Brazilian accelerator association. In 2011, we didn't, have, we didn't have any accelerator. Now we have an association of accelerators with more than 15 accelerators uh, that are doing some investment in Brazil. Only the Brazilian accelerators. And we have a lot of Brazilian companies that were accelerated by 500 startups. Techstars and some big accelerators that are not based in Brazil. And 15 days ago, we were selected by the government among uh, 182 initiatives of the federal government as the second most innovative public policy in Brazil. Against uh, public policy in health, education, justice, and Sara Brazil was the second most. Uh, innovative. It's very proud for us because to, to, to a government to award, award a startup program, an entrepreneurship program among health, uh, justice, and a lot of different issues that a country has, it's very important to us. And it's the result of work, not just of our work, but especially the startup's work. We are just feeders on that. The startups do the results, not us. We just help them accelerators in a lot of public and private partners in Brazil. Also, I'd like to thank you again, and I'm here for, for this day, and I hope to have more connection between Brazil and a lot of countries that are here, and not in those countries that are not here, we are also open to connect and to have more opportunities in Brazil and with you. Thank you. Thank you a lot.